This video is sponsored by Rail and Road Auction House, the Midwest's only dedicated home for transportation memorabilia. Give yourself a chance to own a piece of history by attending one of their upcoming online or in-person auctions. Learn more by visiting rarauctions.com now. These days, it's downright difficult to find classic GE locomotives on revenue freight trains. Phased out by more reliable EMD locomotives, older GEs are truly slim pickings. But there are still a few short lines in the southeast that continue to maintain and operate them on a daily basis. One such operation is located in Anderson, South Carolina, and on the morning of February 24, 2023, we decided to pay it a visit. The Pickens Railway is a 28-mile-long family-owned short line known for its unique roster of four-axle GEs, including six active U-18Bs of Seaboard Coastline heritage. It is the only operator of the eight-cylinder Universal Series locomotives which were purchased from CSX in 2000. At 0700, both the Belton and Anderson crews went on duty and began arranging motive power at Pickens shops south of Anderson. We were there when they fired up two of the U-18Bs, which would be used on the railroad's Belton job. The shop facility at Anderson was built in 2013 to provide the railroad with a new base of operations after the closure of the original Pickens line between Pickens and Easley, South Carolina. The U-18B is a diesel-electric locomotive that was introduced in March of 1973 by General Electric. At the time, GE wanted to expand its offerings beyond the U-23 and U-25B models, so it was designed to meet the needs of railroads looking for a medium-horsepower locomotive that could operate on lighter rail, making it ideal for branch lines and short-haul operations. Based on the design of GE's U-23B, the U-18B was built on a shorter frame with a smaller turbocharged prime mover. The locomotive featured an 8-cylinder FDL engine that produced 1,800 horsepower and had a maximum speed of 70 miles per hour. Because of its smaller size when compared to GE's larger U-series locomotives, the U-18Bs were nicknamed Baby U-Boats. The U-18B was built by GE over a period of three years and was purchased by five railroads, Main Central, and AM. Providence and Worcester, Seaboard Coastline, and Texas Utilities. At the time, GE offered a trade-in program to railroads that wanted to replace older locomotives with newer power at a discounted price. The program used recycled parts from GE locomotives or other builders, like trucks, traction motors, and generators to save customers from paying all new production costs. SCL opted to replace many of its aging Alco road switchers and EMDF units by opting into GE's trade-in program for U-18Bs between 1973 and 1974, ordering more than any other railroad, with a total of 105 units, 67 of which were equipped with EMD's Blomberg-style truck. Ten additional U-18Bs were ordered by SCL in 1975, but they decided to cancel at the last minute. Looking to replace its Alco road switchers, Maine Central purchased SCL's cancelled order as part of its independence class, named so in celebration of the nation's bicentennial. The locomotives were painted in a modified version of the Central's yellow scheme with green pinstriping and included a large eagle on the nose. The railroad also named each U-18B in honor of a notable person or location involved in the Revolutionary War. The U-18B was not a popular model due to reliability issues and lesser horsepower compared to the other four-axle locomotives of that time period. Crews also complained that the locomotives did not ride smoothly, rocking vigorously on light rail. NAM was the only other railroad with a sizable order, receiving 45 total units. As a result of poor sales, GE ended production of the U-18B in October of 1976. Plans for an updated 1800-horsepower-7 series model were also scrapped. 
Despite its bad reputation on other roads, Seaboard was fond of its U18Bs and seemed to have found success in operating the model on locals. Notably, three units were assigned to phosphate service in Florida's Bone Valley. As part of the family lines, Seaboard's fleet of baby boats was transferred to CSX, which continued to operate them in local service throughout the 1980s and early 90s. After two decades of revenue freight service, many were retired, sold, or scrapped by 1994. A total of nine units escaped the scrapper's torch and were relegated to maintenance of way service in the mid-90s. The locomotives were repainted orange with black lettering to match other maintenance equipment and to differentiate them from locomotives in revenue freight service. Since maintenance of way trains aren't typically heavy, the U18Bs were perfectly suited for these assignments. In 2000, CSX decided to part ways with its remaining baby boats by selling them off. Pickens purchased eight units with the intent to use 9501 as a part source. Upon delivery, the in-service locomotives were patched with white makeshift Pickens lettering and reporting marks. By 2005, they were repainted in a fresh coat of orange with black lettering. Over the years, Pickens has leased some of their U18Bs out to other short lines. In 2023, six remain on Pickens rails. In 2017, Pickens acquired four B40-8s from CSX Transportation to supplement motive power needs. Two were downrated from 4,000 to 2,000 horsepower and are now classified as B20-8s. These units remain in the YN3 scheme, but the CSX lettering has been patched over. Pickens crews seem to prefer the U18Bs, though, as the Dash 8s are not often used. In 2012, Pickens general manager Donnie Sims was quoted in Trains Magazine's annual locomotive edition, saying, quote, They're great short line engines and very fuel efficient. They use a third as much fuel as an EMD and don't require a lot of maintenance, end quote. B20-8 number 5970 was the assigned power for the Anderson job, and in order to get the locomotive out of the shop complex, a pair of inactive U18Bs needed to be moved out of the way. The 2000 horsepower GE shoved the locomotives onto the main where they were coupled to the Belton job's active baby boats. The Belton crew shoved the dead U18Bs back up to the shop complex where they would await their next assignment. With the four-pack of U18Bs in the clear, the Anderson job engineer pulled a cut of freight cars south so that the Belton crew's locomotives could be tied onto the head end. The Anderson job works around town by making deliveries and pickups from the railroad's customers. With the Anderson crew in the clear, the Belton job rolled down the hill to couple onto the head end of the train.
The train departed just after 7.30 a.m. and would do some switching in the area before heading to Belton in the afternoon. We caught up with the train in Gluck, South Carolina, where the friendly crews were switching cars. From the parking lot of a nearby restaurant, you can get some great shots of the crews working at Pregis. This locally owned restaurant opened at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, and its friendly owner, Stu, spoke with us about the delicious New York-style hot dogs they offer. Hello, I'm Stuart, and this is Bite Me Wieners. We're a family-owned operation here in Anderson, South Carolina, and we have some really good hot dogs. Some folks like to know, how did I get into being a hot dog vendor? Well, quite frankly, I'm a real estate appraiser. Currently, I've been here since uh, about uh, 1999, so that's quite a few years. Love it here in the South, I really do. But I really get aggravated when people talk about how great their hot dogs are. They're okay, and I have no problem with variety. But when I first tried some hot dogs here, I was shocked because you're kind of, oh, they're just not what I like. They're getting a little mushy, maybe. It's not, I'm not insulting any of the big competitors around, I swear I'm not. But this is, a, this is Anderson. We're, we're, we're a popular place. We're one of the best places for retiring in the entire country. So if you can't offer a variety of hot dogs, there's something wrong with you. And we have a good hot dog, they're New York style, which means that our particular brand is a natural casing hot dog. So when you bite into it, it's got a great snap, nice and juicy taste. We got 10 toppings, custom made, the kind you really like. We got me sometimes in there, who knows if that's good or not. I got a great staff, got a nice person came by here, a train spotter and checked out what we had going on here. I do hope you make it here and thank you again for taking some time to pay attention to me. Have a good day. Pregis is one of the Pickens newest customers, which acquired a former plastics factory along the railroad at the height of the pandemic. Pregis manufactures flexible film packaging for food, consumer packaged goods, and medical applications. After an $80 million remodel, production began at the company's Anderson plant in October of 2021. After kicking out a covered hopper car, both the Belton and Anderson jobs pulled ahead to clear a switch, then shoved down the first quality spur track to work the company's Anderson tissue plant. After approximately 30 minutes of switching, the Belton job departed first quality tissue for downtown Anderson, where it would work the Norfolk Southern Interchange.
history of the Pickens Railway dates back to the late 19th century when the town of Pickens was experiencing rapid growth and needed a reliable means of transportation for both people and goods. The Pickens Railway Company was incorporated in 1898 and began operations the following year running a line from Pickens to Easley, a distance of approximately 9 miles. Easley, the railroad's southern terminus, is where Pickens connected with the Atlanta and Charlotte Airline Railroad, which eventually became part of the Southern Railway. The initial purpose of the railroad was to transport timber from the forests in the surrounding area to the sawmills in Pickens and Easley. The railroad also transported passengers, carrying people between the two towns for work and other purposes. On its very first run to Easley, a group of local children placed spikes on the track to see if it would cause a derailment. To the dismay of the railroad, the train did indeed derail. It was to be a bad omen because the railroad company operated at a loss for the next seven years. By 1910, Southern Railway had obtained a majority stake in the Pickens Railroad, but by the 1920s it had been returned to private ownership. In the same decade, Singer Manufacturing Company, the sewing machine manufacturer, constructed a large factory near Pickens and used the railroad to bring in the necessary materials for production and to transport its finished products. Over the first half of the 20th century, the Pickens continued to serve the communities of Pickens and Easley. Despite facing hard times during the Great Depression and World War II, the company was able to survive by adjusting its operations and tailoring its services to meet the needs of its customers. In 1939, Singer bought the railroad outright to serve its factory and a newly acquired logging subsidiary, the Poinsett Lumber and Manufacturing Company. In downtown Anderson, we caught the Belton train at the Norfolk Southern Z-Line interchange, where the crew set out cars and also picked up some inbounds for the Greenville and Western, another short line that Pickens interchanges with in Belton. The Z-Line runs from Walhalla through Seneca and continues south 25 and a half miles until it reaches Anderson. Six axles are banned on the Z-Line due to weight restrictions. A pair of EMD GP60s is the usual motive power for Norfolk Southern local train P45, which typically runs after dark, dropping off cars for the Pickens in the early morning hours.
In the post-war period, the railroad experienced a resurgence as the local economy grew and demand for transportation services increased. In 1959, Singer consolidated its manufacturing divisions and relocated its cabinet and power tool companies to the area. They too were rail served, and logging continued to be a huge moneymaker for the Short Line Railroad. Pickens was operated by the Poinsett Lumber and Manufacturing Company until 1963, when it was sold for approximately $50,000 to a private individual by the name of James Jones. Jones built a new engine house and established a car shop for rebuilding and renovating railroad cars. In the mid-60s, he dabbled in the excursion business with Jones Tours, a separate company that hosted rail tours on both the Pickens and Southeastern Class 1 railroads using the Train X articulated passenger set that Jones partially restored at the railroad's car shop. In the 1970s, the Pickens Railway faced new challenges as competition from trucking and other forms of transportation intensified. Jones sold the railroad to the National Railway Utilization Company, or NRUC, which diversified Pickens' business by expanding the car shops to manufacture and repair rail cars. In the early 1990s, NRUC became the emergent group. In 1991, Norfolk Southern Railway leased its Belton to Honeypath line to the Pickens under the Thoroughbred Short Line program. This line was built in the 1840s by the Greenville and Columbia, which eventually was acquired by the Southern Railway. Three years later, the Pickens acquired the Belton to Anderson line from Norfolk Southern, which had been constructed in the 1840s as part of the Blue Ridge Railway and included the Anderson trackage formerly owned by CSX, the Piedmont in Northern, and the Charleston in Western Carolina. In 1996, Emergent sold the short line to the CLC, Chattahoochee Locomotive Corporation, which renamed the company Pickens Railway. In recent years, Pickens Railway has faced new challenges as the industry has undergone significant changes. A decline in business on the original Pickens to Easley line forced the company to abandon this section of track for good. On April 20, 2013, Pickens Railway bid farewell to the communities it was founded to serve as the last train was pulled by U18B, number 9502, and a rebuilt GP10. After over a century of railway operations, the final run marked the conclusion of this long-standing tradition. 
Although the original Pickens route is lost to time, the company has continued to adapt and innovate, investing in new technology, locomotives, and infrastructure. Nowadays, Pickens moves a diverse range of goods such as kaolin, limestone, synthetic rubber and processing oil, carbon black, plastics, silica, scrap metal, paper, bird feed ingredients, agricultural materials, and electrical equipment. Customers include Owens Corning, Electrolux, Michelin, First Quality, Southern States Cooperative, the Packaging Corporation of America, Omnisource, Pregis, Coveris, Duke Power, and others with a combined employment base of over 3,100 people. The Pickens Railway remains an important part of the local economy, providing essential transportation services and helping to connect the communities of Anderson, Belton, and Honeypath. The short line transports upwards of 4,000 rail cars each year, reducing highway traffic in the upstate region by taking an estimated 16,000 trucks off the road. When the original Blue Ridge Railway was built through town in 1856, a deep cut was made in an effort to locate the line in the heart of Anderson. A small passenger depot was built west of the cut, where passengers boarded trains headed for Seneca or Greenwood. Initially, three bridges were built to span the cut, but as the city grew and prospered at the turn of the 20th century, the downtown district was becoming quite cramped. In 1914, the Texas Oil Company caught fire, which destroyed the nearby station and three city blocks. As a result, Southern Railway, the Blue Ridge Railway's successor, constructed a new passenger station over top the cut. An internal stairway and elevator led down to the track level where passengers were boarded. The two-story depot housed Southern Railway Company offices. The ornate second-story architecture was removed in 1940. The Main Street Passenger Depot ceased operations in 1945. Following its closure, a local retail store by the name of Gallant Belk acquired the building to unite its other properties on Main Street. Over time, a unified storefront was established by linking the buildings together with a single facade on Whitner Street. Gallant Belk built a new parking deck to accommodate its customers, which also spanned the railroad cut, essentially creating an artificial tunnel. Because of this, the station platform, stairs, and elevator were obscured and forgotten.
few miles east of Anderson, Pickens crosses Broadway Creek over a tall steel bridge with concrete pillars. We caught up with the train in downtown Belton, a small community with a population just shy of 4,200 people. Constructed in 1910, the historic depot now houses the Ruth Drake Museum with local exhibits and artifacts, as well as a genealogy and reference room. The South Carolina Tennis Hall of Fame is also located within the depot, as Belton is the site of the South Carolina Palmetto Tennis Championship. Belton Junction is where the Pickens Railway interchanges with neighboring short line Greenville and Western. Typically, the Belton job runs Monday through Friday from Anderson to the junction, continuing to Honeypath as needed to serve the Packaging Corporation of America. 
This afternoon, we were fortunate to document the train running all the way to Honeypath. Doshino is home to the Pickens Deadline. Old, unused locomotives and equipment are stored here, including U18B number 9501.
Near the end of the line in Honeypath, we caught the crew switching at the PCA factory. As mentioned previously, this location manufactures corrugated boxes. The box cars in the consist are loaded with large rolls of brown paper that are processed at the factory and manufactured into boxes used for shipping packages. Corrugated is the preferred choice for packing and shipping due to its strong and durable properties. In contrast to cardboard and other materials which lack impact resistance, corrugated boxes are capable of withstanding the stresses of transportation from a warehouse to a mail processing center and ultimately to a delivery vehicle. After gravity switching the box cars around the locomotives, the train crew began their journey back to Anderson. At Greenville and Western's Belton Yard, we found this former Santa Fe GP30U and also caught train Z590-24 switching cars in preparation of the interchange with Pickens. The Greenville and Western Railway owns and operates just under 13 miles of track in Anderson County, South Carolina. Its trackage once belonged to the Piedmont and Northern, later Seaboard Coastline and CSX. The line was up for abandonment in 2006, but was rejected by the Surface Transportation Board as it was still profitable. 87 carloads had originated from or terminated at two online industries in 2005, in addition to overhead traffic from 10 customers on the Pickens Railway. On October 20, 2006, CSX sold the line to the family-owned Greenville and Western Railway. Traffic surged to 1,872 carloads by 2009, primarily fueled by growth in ethanol traffic. Today, Greenville and Western also ships scrap metal, limestone, fertilizer, feed products, plastics, and paper. It uses a classic roster of EMD locomotives to pull its trains, including two GP9s and two GP30s. The company's signature green and white paint scheme stands out when next to Pickens' orange U18Bs. 
G&W's logo is essentially a modified Piedmont and Northern Herald, a tribute to the predecessor road. Greenville and Western runs through the small villages of Belton, Williamston, and Pelzer, where it connects with CSX, giving the Pickens a second Class 1 connection. The two railroads have a symbiotic relationship, because Pickens also gives the G&W access to an interchange with Norfolk Southern at Anderson. Z590 ran engine lights out of the yard so that the Pickens crew could shove in, clearing the switch with its inbound cars for the G&W.
With the train assembled, Z590 departed Belton Junction for Pelzer. The Pickens crew would then run into the yard to pick up 21 cars for delivery to Anderson from the G&W. While the Pickens crew worked the yard, we decided to chase the Greenville and Western train into Belton. After catching Z590 ducking under the overpass at Belton, we caught up with the Pickens crew west of town as they meandered their way back to Anderson.
in Anderson, Pickens crosses the Rocky River and runs over top an abandoned section of ex-Piedmont and Northern trackage that was built to serve the ore textile mill, the first in the South to exclusively operate on electricity supplied by a nearby commercial generator. The mill was also served by the Charleston and Western Carolina Railway, an Atlantic Coastline subsidiary. Today, Pickens operates on what remains of the former CNWC to Gluck. After some switching in town, we caught the Belton job departing for the NS interchange. Listen to those baby boats working hard.
Once they finished switching at the Z-Line interchange, we followed the train back to Gluk.
We hope you enjoyed our coverage of the Pickens Railway in South Carolina. This classy short line is a must-see if you're a fan of older GE locomotives that are approaching their 50th year of revenue freight service. A true testament to the care and maintenance by Pickens. Thank you for watching Delay in Block Productions. Until next time, happy railroading.